telling a woman she should do something is actually anti-feminist. <laughs> We're told all the time from so many people what we should be, how we should act. So the question in itself <laughs> goes against what I believe as a feminist anyway. <laughs>
tastefully is the word that I, that comes to mind. Like I enjoy a tasteful. You look Woody fantastic, <laughs> right? That's true. If it's wanted, it's fine. But then like, you can't mind Ree, how would you know? We've all had like bad flirting experiences. But then like, I'm thinking there's a couple I've had where they're like, excuse me, I just want to let you know you're very beautiful. Please have a nice day. And I'm like, okay, thank you. <laughs> you know, and like right. something like that, yeah. that's like short and sweet and there's no expectation. I think that's the thing. I mean, and I'm from, and I'm from New York, so I'm just like automatically on autopilot. Like, don't talk to me, don't look at me. Like my whole life you have the cat calls, but you have like the derogatory cat calls. So if I don't look at you, if I don't speak to you, I'm a bee, I'm, I'm all of these things. But it's like, but if I did give you the time of day, then what would I be? And I don't think like every guy is like that, but it's just yeah, so much so easier and safer. To, <laughs> to just assume, all, yeah, yeah, to assume that nothing is, good. and it's not a good way to live, obviously, but that's just. Well, because then my question is, is who gets let in? And how do you determine who gets let in? And how do you function if in? If they start the, I guess, relationship in a non-romantic or sexual way, like if it's not like a flirty, yeah, it's, it's just a like a, you just meet people, yeah. places, right. and they just talk to you, mm -hmm. yeah, and just talk to you like a normal person. Yeah. Well, at the heart of it, I think that the Me Too movement is about women that have been in situations, whether it's work or personal, where they haven't been in a safe space to speak up or share. And the burden that's on us to protect men or other people by not speaking what has happened to us is actually, can be like PTSD. It's like traumatic to your system. Like I experienced going through being sexually harassed and this happened in 2013 and I still have never come out about it. Statistically speaking, like the number of women who are raped, there's exponentially more than who actually report it. So when I think about the Me Too movement, like there's strength in numbers. You know, when it started, I was like, I don't know if I wanna post about this. I don't know how I feel, but what it did do was it gave me the strength to actually share with someone else. I like I'm realizing as everyone's talking like the reason I'm not in that line is because when Me Too was a big movement, I didn't have the strength or courage to be a part of it. So in my mind it's like still there of like if I I didn't have the courage to be a part of the movement and I still don't have the courage to stand in that line because that's almost admitting that I've had like multiple things happen, you know? And so, so you're representing all the other women that feel the same way. And yeah. so they see you and they relate to you on that. So you're helping other women by saying that. Yeah. I believe the world would be better if it were run by women. Three, two, one. How is that any different than saying, I believe that the world would be better if it were run by men? Like, right. if we're gonna say right. that on this token, we get that on that token, that's not even balanced at all. Right. I think what my thought process is, is in the current state that we're in right now, then I think that it would be, once we get to the place where we are able to raise our children the same way, and like, women aren't afraid to like go outside, and like, guys don't have like toxic masculinity, then it's like, anybody can run the country and like it's all going to be the same because we're all raised the same but I think for right now in the place that we're in I think women have a better understanding of that. But I think it's hard because when you have little boys that are growing up that are just not even accountable or nor should they be for things that men their fathers might have done or their grandfathers and then saying like women should be running the world. It's the same thing where how is that different than in the 1950s seven-year-old little girls were told men should be in positions of power. Maybe if we had more women in leadership in C-suite in, 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 in Congress like if we have more women in leadership period it doesn't have to be running the world maybe right. but if we just had more women right. and women of color different backgrounds like if we had more diversity in general in leadership around the world it would be a better place that's why i, I chose yeah. this one too because i don't think it should be one, one or the one. other yeah. i definitely yeah. think that um, when it's only man run they're missing the rest of society yeah. right. you can't really operate the world or any government or leadership if you're not embracing the second half of society i think the 
problem with what some people think feminism is, is that you have to bring people down in order to raise people up, but you don't have to do that. Like you can raise women up to be in positions of power without pushing men down. And I think that that is a misconception with feminism. Hey guys, I'm Kendra. Thank you so much for watching that episode of Spectrum. If you like what you saw, make sure to subscribe, follow us on Instagram, leave a comment below, and we'll see you next time.